Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Price Check Podcast here on the In The Zone Network, where we go city to city, state to state, worldwide. Today, we got to take a trip out west, man. Western Conference in the NBA is, I mean, just all kinds of moving parts. You got teams changing positions by the game. You got a lot of teams looking to move up the standings. You got some teams unexpectedly taking some falls back uh, into the standings. So we're going to look at it uh, specifically from the perspective of three teams today, Lakers, Suns, and Grizzlies. Now, of course, you know, we can kind of tie two of those in here to start, right? Lakers and Grizzlies coming off a pretty epic game last night where the Lakers get a much-needed 112-103 to victory um, against the Grizzlies. Now, mind you, no John Morant for the Grizzlies. We'll get to that situation in just a second. Um, also, again, no LeBron James, no D'Angelo Russell uh, for the Lakers. Now, D'Angelo Russell, good news for the Lakers. He is expected to be back uh, for their game here Friday against the Raptors. But the story of the game last night really is Anthony Davis, man. Um, Anthony Davis has been lights out all season, really, when LeBron hasn't played um, and has had to step up and, and kind of lift up the, the guys around him. But last night was even more incredible than some of those previous games, man. 30 points, 22 rebounds, two blocks, 11 to 17 from the field. I mean, MVP caliber type of you know performance there. Um, He's doing everything for him. He's being a reliable big man that you expected him to be uh, when the Lakers traded for him. And he's kind of taking that torch right now and carrying the team uh, when they really need it the most. Now, other big thing about that win last night for the Lakers is that it does put them now in the ninth position uh, in the Western Conference, which they had been on the outside of that play-in looking in. Now they are firmly uh, in the play-in mix, about half game ahead of a you know, group of teams, Pelicans, Jazz, and Thunder um, in 11, 12, and 13. But Lakers get a big uh, win. Grizzlies, on the other hand, taking a little bit of a slide, right? Um, you know, we've seen – games that they play without John Morant this year, they usually are able to kind of hang in and still keep them close. Lately, though, they were already sliding with Ja. Now, without him in the lineup, it's been a little bit of a tougher task for them in recent games, uh, losing to both the L.A. teams in their last two games. You mentioned the Lakers lost last night, and Clippers went on a 24-2 run late in that game to come back uh, and get a win against them on Sunday. So, um, we mentioned Ja Morant. He's been in the news here recently with – uh, what is now, I guess, like his fourth or fifth alleged gun situation um, here with the IG Live video that surfaced uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. A uh, team had a road game in Denver that they played. Um, of course, after that game, Ja was uh, seen with, you know, 22 in, in, the, uh, in the strip club with his shirt off and all that. You know, I get a lot of people kind of wondering what's going on. I don't want to speculate on the situation, don't want to assume anything. Um, ja right now is, I guess, suspended. He's away from the team. They haven't, you know, they've kind of tiptoed around calling it a suspension, what have you. Um, but nonetheless, he's away from the team indefinitely. So what does that mean for their playoff hopes? Well, they've already now dropped into a tie with the Sacramento Kings for the second seed in the Western Conference. That's a big development. Here's why Here's why that is. One, if you're looking at, you know, making a long playoff run, one, you want to have John Morant with you. But you also want to have, you know, home court advantage in that second round series, especially if you know you're not going to get home court advantage throughout the entire playoffs, given the way that Denver is running away with the Western Conference in the regular season right now. So, now you're dropping into a you know, spot where you may not have home court in that second round series if you would see uh, you know, a 2-3 matchup between them and what is Sacramento Kings. Crazy, crazy story right now. Like the beam for the folks uh, in Sacramento. But now in a second place uh, tie, well, I guess Sacramento holds the tiebreaker. So now third seed in the West if you're the Memphis Grizzlies. You also got a Phoenix Suns team, which, of course, we're going to talk about here in a second creeping up uh, two and a half games behind both Sacramento and Memphis right now. Now, Memphis, you know, don't want to give up that seeding, but then you think about having to play, you know, right now what would be the sixth seed Golden State Warriors if the playoffs started today. Not really the matchup you want to go to, go into 
team that has already beaten Memphis uh, in the playoffs last year. You also don't want to go into that matchup without potentially having your star player, which we don't know uh, when we're going to see Ja at this point. He's obviously got you know, uh, some things that he's trying to deal with both personally and potentially legally now with uh, the Colorado police looking into the gun incident uh, in the strip club here last weekend. So a lot of things going on for Memphis really just not seeming like their year at this point. I know um, a lot was made about their playoff hopes, Josh saying, you know, I'm fine in the West. Um, since those comments, things have kind of trended downhill for them as a team. So really interested to see how that entire situation plays out. Obviously hoping the best for Ja, um, as well as the Grizzlies, honestly. But, you know, a lot that's going to have to shake out for them in order to get the shit right it, um, and move it in the right direction come playoff time. So now talked about the Grizzlies. We talked about the Lakers game. Now, the Lakers are, are, are moving up in the standings. We still don't know just yet when we're going to get LeBron James back. Um, you know, going to be reevaluated in three weeks, which was, you know, as of about this time last week. Um, they're going to be dangerous if and when he does come back, um, especially with the way Anthony Davis is playing right now. Now, we mentioned he's been kind of going off all year long without LeBron. These last five games specifically for Anthony Davis, now a couple of these were with LeBron, but – you know, last night, 30 points, 22 rebounds. Previous game, 39 points, 8 rebounds, 2 blocks. 38 points, 5 rebounds, 2 blocks. 38 points, 19 rebounds, 5 blocks. Uh, 30 points, 15 rebounds, and 3 blocks. So, last five games, he's been outstanding. Um, the Lakers are starting to creep up and starting to put a little bit of pressure on the teams in front of them in the standings. So, right now, of course, we mentioned that they are the 9 seed. Uh, game and a half behind both Minnesota and uh, the Clippers, who both sit in 7-8 and eight right now, kind of tied with the same record, both of them being a half game behind Golden State sitting in 6. So a lot of teams bunched up right now, a lot of teams jockeying for position. Now, one team that is above that pack, the Phoenix Suns. Got to talk about Phoenix. Uh, they are now undefeated 3-0 and since Kevin Durant has entered their lineup. Um... It's pretty scary looking at them two on offense and those two being Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Now, we know Kevin Durant is a bad man. Devin Booker, though, since Kevin Durant has been in the lineup, uh, 37 points against the Hornets, 35 points against the Bulls, and another 36 on Sunday in a game against Dallas. They got pretty, you know, chippy between him and Luka Doncic. Uh, we saw, you know, a little bit of, you know, uh, smack being talked between those two back and forth, uh, both of which had incredible games. But Devin Booker has been lights out being able to take some of that pressure not only off of KD, but now having KD taking some of that pressure off of him to where, you know, if Devin Booker is your second best scorer on a given night, that's pretty amazing when you look at the rest of the teams in the Western Conference. And, you know, we talk about today's NBA, you need wings, defenders, versatile guys who can switch. Um, the teams out West don't really have multiple guys to throw at both him and Kevin Durant. We saw that on Sunday with Dallas. Of course, Dallas already being a little bit shorthanded from a defensive standpoint, given what they had to give up uh, to get Kyrie Irving in the building. But, I think all in all, um, this Suns team is going to be a team that is going to not only put up buckets, but they're going to be a tough out. Now, the way things are shaking up for them, of course, we mentioned they are um, about two and a half games behind both the Kings in their division and for the conference, but also behind Memphis as well. Now, if they stay locked into that four seed, we've got two two really strong outcomes in terms of a four or five uh, matchup uh, that's going to be possible for the playoffs. Now, the first one, same game that we saw on Sunday, Suns versus Mavericks, 4-5 or five in the first round. We already know what kind of series that's going to be uh, with the way that Luka and uh, Devin Booker are going back and forth, but you also add the KD and Kyrie element to that series. That would be a hell of a playoff matchup. You also have the, the potential of having the Phoenix Suns and Golden State Warriors in a 4-5 or five matchup to start the playoffs, which you know, getting KD to go against the team that he obviously left in free agency a few years ago. That's going to be a storyline within itself, how they defend KD, how Phoenix defends Steph Curry and Golden State, given what KD may know about that situation. So all in all, a lot of storylines that could potentially come out of those playoff series. Now, looking at the West as a whole, the Nuggets, 
I think this is a bad development for them. Nuggets have been great all regular season long. Nikola Jokic, of course, right now still the front runner for MVP for the third straight year. Um, but the problem for them is this. If you're that one seed and you got to face the four or five coming out of that first round, you know, yeah, okay, I may be okay with facing Dallas if I'm Denver. But I don't want to see any parts of Phoenix or Golden State until the conference finals if I can help it. So, um, you know, especially Phoenix with the way that they're playing with Kevin Durant, the scoring punch that he adds for that team uh, alongside Devin Booker. I don't think that that's something that Denver is necessarily the best equipped to handle, um, especially with, you know, them being able to, uh, you know, I guess Phoenix being able to guard Jokic one-on-one -on -one with DeAndre Aiden. You know, they've got some different ways that they can switch those lineups around now. Phoenix does have, you know, a little bit thinner rotation. They've got some role guys. They still have some questions about. We saw a lot of Josh Okogie, um, a lot of uh, Ish Wainwright, those types of guys playing in that fifth spot alongside Booker, Paul, uh, KD, and Aiden. But, I think they've got time to kind of get some confidence in, in some of those guys. We're probably too far along from a buyout standpoint to add anybody to the roster. But I do think that, you know, potential matchups, Suns, Nuggets in the second round, just don't see how that goes uh, in Denver's favor, even with the reigning MVP on their team. So, um, you know, you look at the – Bottom of the Western Conference and some of those uh, matchups that may have to play out. Of course, the Lakers are looking to move up. You've got, you know, Timberwolves potentially waiting there uh, as well, which, you know, we'll see if and when Carl Anthony Towns comes back, how that might impact their team. Still a lot of moving parts there as well. But specifically for these three teams, Lakers, Grizzlies, Suns, we got the Suns moving up and trying to force the hand there uh, of the Kings and Grizzlies. You got the Lakers trending upwards, of course. Um, you know, next three games for them are going to tell a lot. They've got the Raptors at home as well as the Knicks at home on Sunday before going to New Orleans on Tuesday to face a really Pelicans team that has not played their best basketball as of late either. So uh, things trending up for both of those teams, but the Grizzlies definitely falling back to the pack. So, Still a lot of storyline that we're going to see here uh, over the course of the next few uh, games here in the Western Conference. We're really hitting crunch time right now. Not a whole lot of time left in the season, man. About 15 or so games for a lot of these teams. Um, very interested to see what happens once LeBron gets back for the Lakers and how that may potentially help their chances at getting to their goal of reaching the sixth seed, which, again, they're not, they're not too far behind it, man. They're about two games out of that sixth seed right now. Um, and also got a big win on Sunday against the current team in that sixth spot, which is Golden State. So um, the Western Conference, man, living up to the reputation. They are always uh, a lot of star power, a lot of storylines that are coming out. Now you got a couple of big Western Conference matchups here tonight, uh, Wednesday in the NBA. Two that really stand, well, really is shorter slate. So the only two that kind of really matter from a playoff standing standpoint with teams that are both in the conference. You got the Mavericks going to New Orleans to face the Pelicans. Both of those teams needing wins at this point to kind of maintain their uh, current standing. Now, Pelicans, again, have not been playing their best basketball at all as of late. They've been without Zion Williamson, which right now we're not sure when he's going to come back. Apparently, the setback that he had with his hamstring injury. Pretty significant. So we'll see if he can get back in the lineup. And even with Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum, that is a team that has been struggling here in the second half of the season. Mavericks, we talked about them. They've had a couple tough losses here with Luke and Kyrie. Um, even having that one-two punch has kind of left them a little bit shorthanded. But I do think that's a win that they can go into New Orleans and get um, and try to keep themselves in that five, six seed range versus falling back uh, into the play-in. You also have... The OKC Thunder going to Phoenix. Um, Phoenix team, we talked about how they're rolling right now. I do think they're going to win that game against the Thunder. But the Thunder, again, right there on the outside looking in uh, on the play-in mix. A win tonight would do them very well uh, in terms of being able to get to that 10 spot. So, also you have uh, the Portland Trailblazers going to Boston. Now, obviously, Boston is in the East, not in the Western Conference. But um, a game that Portland absolutely needs as well for their playoff chances moving forward. So we'll see how some of these things shake out, man. It's a lot that is going on in the Western Conference, a lot of uh, intrigue, a lot of interesting matchups that could take place here uh, as we get through the remainder of the regular season. Now, 
one thing that we do uh, have to also mention that is not NBA related, but also basketball related here before we go, my alma mater, Southeast Missouri State Red Hawks. Go SEMO. Team has made it to the big dance. We're going to have March Madness playing. Cue up the future. We got March Madness playing all month for them. They are going to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 23 seasons, man. So big, big shout out to my school. We rooting for y'all, man. Got to keep uh, keep that winning uh, going at this point. It's, of course, now one and done. But um, until next time, man, Price Check is back. We are going to next probably talk about uh, what's shaking out East. Because uh, I've got some thoughts about uh, some of those Eastern Conference teams, both at the top as well as some teams uh, that are looking forward to next year as opposed to the playoffs. But until then, man, this has been Josh Price here on the In The Zone Network Price Check Podcast. Check it out.